I'm guessing that's what the thumbnail looks like. I haven't made it yet. I'm on paternity leave, in case you didn't know. I'm, uh, this, this video is pre-recorded because the YouTube algorithm is evil and I have to satiate its every whim. I made a thing! Th this is a tactile dashboard for Home Assistant that costs less than a fiver. Uh, this is a numerical wireless keypad and it's connected to my Raspberry Pi and triggers Home Assistant when you press the buttons. If you're interested in something like this, either for your wife because she doesn't want to do the whole voice thing or she doesn't want to use Home Assistant on an app, this is a great thing to just have by the bed, to be able to click things, set alarms, do whatever. Um, if you're interested, there is a tutorial coming up, but first, a demonstration in which I did not plug my microphone into the camera because I'm a moron. Oh, hey there. I didn't see you come in. Why don't you come and take a seat on the bed? Yeah, come and take a seat on the bed. Our relationship is purely platonic. This is the coolest thing I've ever done, right? Check this out. This is my cute ball lamp button, but it just toggles my cute ball lamp. But before anyone says, what's the point in that? That's way too basic. Use your imagination. All aboard the imagination balloon! This is controlled via Toyo Smart Life locally using Home Assistant. Everything on here is running locally through one integration or another. This is the main lights. That switches on and off using a car via Zigbee and again is running locally. This button over here is a play pause button, which plays and pauses media, but it also turns the NVIDIA shield on if it's not already turned on. It turns the NVIDIA shield on, and because HDMI CEC is set up, that in turn turns the projector on too. Cool as that. Check this out, we press Netflix. Netflix! And it's so fast, it works really quickly. And the really cool thing is, if there's a screensaver running, it disables the screensaver and then launches Netflix. Press Prime Video, I get Prime Video. Press Disney Plus, I get Disney Plus. Press Paramount, I get Paramount. Press Apple TV, I get Apple TV. I press YouTube, it doesn't only load YouTube, it actually loads Corridor Crew's channel because that's what me and Nisha are watching at the moment. I've got an aircon button and that toggles the aircon on and off. I've got two buttons for the blinds. I've got one which turns the blind off. There's like a light button, so it turns the daylight on. Uh, a button that sends the blind back down again. It's the dark button. I have a, uh, I have a, a, a hard button for And when I press that, it makes the cute ball lamp go pink. Uh, it sets an automatic playlist playing on the Amazon Echo speaker, which is for obvious things. Um, and I will have it set these lights off. The main lights aren't normally on at this point anyway, but I shall, uh, I shall have it turn those off at some point. And then finally, we have a, uh, a sleepy time button. And the bedtime button turns the Nvidia shield off, it turns the projector off, it turns this light off, and it starts my Google Home speaker playing a local audio file, which is a waterfall sound to help me get to sleep. How cool is that? Before this tutorial begins, I've been asked by Home Assistant fans to please stop putting jokes in my tutorials, so this performance is, is for you. So most of you should have File Editor installed already if you're seasoned professionals like me, but if not, you just need to go to Settings, and then Add-ons, and then find the File Editor, and just install it from here. There'll be a button somewhere to install it. Uh, and then start it if it's not already started. And then also, you'll want to just make sure it appears in this menu, and makes life much, much easier. And you do that just by hitting Show in Sidebar, just dot that, and then you get this file editor here. From file editor, all you've got to do is go into the correct folder for configurating your YAML file. Uh, just a small thing, goofing around in here can destroy Home Assistant, so uh, don't, don't get this wrong. Uh, more importantly though, I think the best thing to do is to back up before we start. So if you go to settings and then system and then backups and then create backup, all you gotta do is give it a name and hit create and it will back up your existing home assistant just in case anything goes horribly wrong. If you now go back to file editor, we can continue with the process. 
Uh, this will turn you back into a virgin. Your virginity will grow back just by coming in here, and I do apologise for that. Bespoke configuration dot yaml fires. But all you got to do is stick in keyboard underscore remote section here, somewhere at the bottom. Uh, and I shall copy this for you into my description for the video. So if you just take it from the description for the video, paste it in here exactly as I have done, and then hit the save button. And then you've got uh, your keyboard remote integration all set up. Once we've saved that, I believe we need to restart Home Assistant. So to do that, just go to settings, and then go to system. Hit this little button at the top, and do a quick reload. It will just reload your YAML configuration files so that we can carry on. A few minutes later. Once everything's been booted back up, you need to insert your small dongle into your Raspberry Pi. That's what she said. Uh, there's nothing sexual about that at all. This is my Raspberry Pi. Your Raspberry Pi may differ. And we're just going to bang that in the USB port whilst listening to the dulcet tones of Taylor Swift courtesy of my wife. Bloody Swifty. If you're enjoying this tutorial and generally enjoy smart home nonsense with a bit of humour thrown in, I want to hit that subscribe. Stop skipping. I can see what you're doing. Hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, and give this video a thumbs up. It really would mean a lot. Thanks. On with the show. So if you've been clever and bought the same keyboard I have, which I strongly recommend you do, not only because it will make this easier, but because I'll get commission, um, you just need to change this if you haven't used the same keyboard. This event zero here is the thing that Home Assistant is going to be listening to, and if you've used a different keyboard, you'll need to listen to something else, potentially. You can find out what this event zero should be by going to settings, so I'm going to open this in a new tab, and under the settings, go into uh, system, and then hardware, and then all hardware. And in here, you'll find your keyboard. Your keyboard will be written something to the effect of wireless receiver event KBD. Um, unfortunately, you'll find there are others in here too, um, and it could potentially be any of them. You might need to try each one of these events in your YAML file where it says event zero, you might need to swap that out for event one, two, three, or four. But really, hopefully, you're gonna find something that looks like this. Wireless receiver event KBD that refers to your keyboard, and if you just stick it in there, that's what she said. then Home Assistant will know what to listen to. So now that we've told Home Assistant how to listen to our keyboard, we're now going to see if Home Assistant can listen to our individual key presses, and then we're going to make note of those individual key press responses so that we can use them in routines. So all you do now is go to Developer Tools, and then Events, and we're going to Listen to Events. The events we're going to listen to are our keyboard, remote integration, and the command they received. If I tell it to start listening and then press a key on my keyboard, I should see a bunch of stuff appear. So as you can see below where I told it to start listening, you can see the actual buttons that were pressed and what it was Home Assistant saw when you pressed them. Um, you can see that these are kind of random, you don't know exactly what they are, but the thing you're looking for is the key code. This is 80, and 80, if I remember rightly, is the 7 key on my keyboard. I, I don't know why I remember that. I'm a massive nerd, it would seem. I can see his virginity growing back as we speak. No. One of us! One of us! One of us! So, uh, 83 is something else, 82 is something else. So what you want to do is you want to just start this over, so if you hit refresh, and then tell it to listen again. Keyboard underscore remote underscore command underscore received. And then press start listening. All you gotta do is press the buttons one at a time and take a note of each key code that comes up when you have pressed your button. You wanna put those into a notepad file and store them for later use. I've got one already pre-prepared because I've been through this before. This ain't my first rodeo. So for me, key code 128 equals numlock, key code 98 equals the forward slash, key code 55 was the star key. These are all the keys on my keyboard and the key codes that Home Assistant hears when they are pressed and we need those key codes to create our automations. If you have used exactly the same keyboard as me, you can just take note of this. Just note it down on the screen now, hit pause. Hit pause now and take a note. Ha, 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 ha.
In case it's not obvious, if you're hitting keys and nothing is coming up, it's because Home Assistant isn't hearing your key presses. And the only reason that could be is because your YAML configuration file is not correct. So you need to just check you've definitely got the right event in here. If you don't have the right event in there, it's not going to hear nothing. You're actually nearly there. From here, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. It's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. If you just go to settings, and then automations and scenes, and then create automation, create new automation. And we're gonna add a trigger uh, because we want to tell it to listen out for a particular keyboard press. And to do that, all we gotta do is type in here event because we want a manual event to trigger it. The event type is keyboard underscore remote underscore command underscore received. This is telling Home Assistant listen out for a keyboard remote press and then Home Assistant needs to know which keyboard press to listen out for. So if you just bring up your notepad file, I'm going to use uh, the key number one on my keyboard. So I want key code 79. That's it, that's my trigger. If I press number one on my keyboard now, I should see it trigger. As long as you saw that trigger, all we've got to do is create our action. You're basically done. I'm gonna click add action, and then device, and then bedroom, blind. I want to close my bedroom blind. That's what number one is going to do on my keyboard. It's gonna close my bedroom blind. If I now hit save, I can just name my automation and I recommend you name all your automations in exactly the same format so that they are easy to browse later on. So I'm gonna call this keyboard remote hyphen one pressed hyphen and then whatever the result is, bedroom blind. So if you always call it what it is followed by what the trigger is, followed by what the action is. It will make everything really tidy and really easy to browse later on. If you hit save, that's it, you're done. That's your automation. Mother funster. <laughs> I don't know why I just called you that. <laughs> well, this is the least fun I've ever had on a Sunday. <laughs> just hate arts and crafts. Not what I want to be just spending my time doing, but there we go. Let's try and tweeze each one of these individually onto the... Oh, it's filled with loathing. Well, I'm not often proud of stuff, but flipping heck, that's pretty good. Look at that. That'll do the trick. Massive thank you to no Tradition 521 for the tutorial on Reddit that I followed. If you want to go and have a, a written version of this, you can go and check that out there in the description below. In the meantime, this video was brought to you literally by these people here. There's no sponsorship this week because I'm just banging these videos out as fast as humanly possible. Uh, without them, I'd be working in a call center. And if you want to be like those guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, my X's, my threads, my Instagrams, and my TikToks coming out there in my business for you, but <laughs> I do that every week. I can't do it fast enough. <laughs> if you've got one kicking around, a kick, 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 kick,